of who God says we are when we believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. You know, God says that we are chosen, that we are not forsaken, that we are His children. So let's receive that today with open hearts as we sing this out together.
been chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. My name's Libby. And I'm Skylar. And it's a special day. We're going to tell all of the Big God story from beginning to end. Whoa. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> as we tell the Big God story, and you, you guys will act as contestants in our game show. Before we play our game though, let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for this time that we get to learn about you through this fun game. I pray that you would still our hearts and minds and that we'd be receptive to learning about you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So, the Big God story begins in a beautiful garden called... They're going to do great during this game. They're oh, yeah. That, right? Yep, it's Eden. So God created Adam and Eve to live in this garden in perfect relationship with him. But sadly, Adam and Eve sinned. They destroyed their close relationship with God. But God promised to one day send a what? Yep, a redeemer. This redeemer would restore the broken relationship with God and mankind. After only 10 generations, the world became so evil that God decided to destroy all humans and animals through a flood. All except for one man and his family. This name's van was... You guys got this, it's Noah. After the rain stopped, God made a covenant with Noah, promising to never again destroy all living things with the flood. Genesis 8.21 says, And the Lord was pleased with the aroma of the sacrifice and said to himself, I will never again curse this ground because of the human race, even though everything they think or imagine is bent towards evil from childhood. I will never again destroy all living things. After this, Noah's family filled the earth with people, including a man named Abraham. So Abraham entered into a... What? With God. Hmm. Good job. A covenant. So God told Abraham he and his wife, Sarah, would have a baby, and through that child the promised redeemer would eventually be born. After many years, God gave them a son named Isaac. Eventually, the Israelites became enslaved to the Egyptians and cried out for a redeemer. God chose a man named Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and into the... Good job, the promised land. Then God gave the people the... Nice, the Ten Commandments, to show them how to live. But the people grumbled, complained, and disobeyed God, and they didn't believe he would give them the promised land. Because of this, they wandered in the desert for 40 years. So a new generation of people grew up with a new respect for God and his power. It says this in Joshua 1, verses 1 through 2. It says, After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua and the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land that I am giving them. 
So Joshua led this new generation into the promised land where God gave Israel leaders that call, who were called. What do you think? What do you think, guys? Good job, judges. During, during the 450 years of the judges, the Israelites faithfully obeyed God. Then they disobeyed him. <laughs> then returned to him and then disobeyed him again. They eventually cried out for a king. And even though God was their true king, he gave them what they wanted. He let them be ruled by earthly kings. Israel's second king, David, was a man after God's own heart. You can read about that in Acts 13, 22. Eventually, God allowed rebellion to happen and the nation split into two. Ten tribes in the north, Israel, and two tribes in the south, Judah. The family line of the promised redeemer flowed, flowed through the tribe of... You guys got it, Judah. At this point in the big God story, something strange happened. God was, what do you think? He was silent. He was still working and moving in the lives of his people, but we didn't have any record in the Bible of his words. Nearly how many years? Good job, 400 years passed before the opening words of the New Testament. In the first pages of Matthew and Luke, we read that the promise God had made so long ago remained true through the passing of more than 4,000 years. Finally, the moment God's people had waited for, the waited for would be realized in a small town called Bethlehem. Luke 2, 6-7 says, And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her, first son, her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. Jesus was born. The awaited Redeemer had come. Yeah, yeah. Jesus grew up and he served and taught for three years. Then he died for our sins. You see, Jesus came to sacrifice himself to pay for our sins. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross gives everyone the opportunity to have a relationship with God. It also allows believers to love others as he does. The story gets better. Jesus rose from the dead. Luke 24, 6-7 says, He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension made way for the... You know this? Nice! The Holy Spirit. Today, the Holy Spirit gives those who have put their faith in Jesus the power to live out the gospel. The Holy Spirit continues to work in each of our lives to help us generously give our time, our gifts, and our lives as acts of worship. By doing this, we're playing a part in the big God story. Right, this story doesn't end with us. One day Jesus will return to earth in victory as the King of Kings. Those of us who tr have trusted in Jesus will live with him in heaven. And we will have a close relationship with God like the first people had with him in the garden, the way it should be. And from that day on, for all time, we will all be with our Lord and Redeemer. For how long? forever and forever. Oh yeah. <laughs> we just heard the big God story from beginning to end. It's a story of God's love for his people and the way he planned since the very beginning to redeem those who believe in Jesus. It's the most amazing story ever. Sure is. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it's not over and we're a part of it. As believers in Jesus, we get to play a special role in the big God story. In fact, our greatest act of service as those who have chosen to trust and obey Jesus is to tell others about him. You're right. In the beginning of the Big God story, we talked about how God gave Abraham a covenant, which is a promise that he would have so many children that they would be numerous like the stars in the sky. Through faith in Jesus, we're adopted into that family. We are the children of God. So during this song, take some time to either thank God for being a part of his family or pray for someone that maybe doesn't know him yet. As I reflect, I find perspective There in the best and worst days of this life You were always on my side You're in the pain, you're in the promise And on the days the furnace finds my faith You're the fourth within the flame
My God isn't finished yet If he did it before, he can do it again So I'll trust him with what comes next Cause my hindsight says I can count on this My God isn't finished yet It's time for the blessing. Go ahead and hold your hands out like this as I read it over you. May you know God has given you a special role to play in the big God story. May you be blessed by his gracious love for you so your life will be a blessing to others. Bye guys. Yeah.